Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest Riker. You know, we missed the game reaction last night, but I don't think anyone in Raptors land, any Raptors fans even want to break down of that game because it was just unfortunate. It was a heartbreaking loss. They came out with zero energy. And we'll we'll brief we'll talk about the game a little bit in this podcast, but Riker, I think this is gonna be more, you know, video oriented around the, what the Raptors could do to win, and because this series is a seven-game series, in my opinion, it's certainly not over. And you know, we'll break into our opinions on the, what the Raptors do going forward against the Milwaukee Bucks. Well, you know what? Somebody criticized us for saying, or me specifically for saying, it's not a series until someone wins on the road. They said that doesn't really mm-hmm. make any sense because. The, the home team can win all games at home and then they win the series but you know what that's fine because it is a saying it's not a series until somebody wins on the road the Raptors could respond and win the next mm-hmm. two what yep. we were talking about before this podcast even started a lot of the most impactful shots that the role players are making they're hype shots they get the crowd going yep. and that inspires the rest of the bench and all of that will be taken away when the Bucks are playing on the road now c- attribute them to really stepping up to assert themselves right they were the number one offense and the number one defense i think in the certainly the number one defense in the paint yep. uh, in the entire nba we underplayed that for sure and mm-hmm. because the playoffs is a whole different animal but they have held true to their title and they're doing a good job but that's not to say that the raptors can't respond positively at home and so we can maybe break down some of the key takeaways from as you said the game last night and give sort of the positive reasons that the raptors can get the next two wins Yeah, certainly. To build off your point, anyone that watches basketball, superstars, they always play well no matter where they are. If you're a true superstar, if you're Kawhi Leonard, if you're Giannis Antetokounmpo, if you're at home, you're away, you're going to perform. You know, the star players in the NBA are are usually pretty reliable no matter where they are. But it's the role players that kind of, you know, feed off the energy of the crowd, that feed off everyone else around them, and that's when they start to really pick up their play. And in this series, we've seen the Toronto Raptors role players really struggle. The only player that's really stepped up is Norman Powell. Obviously, Kyle Lowry and Siakam aren't role players, but even though, and Siakam's kind of fallen back to earth from where he's been this season. But Norman Powell's been the only role player to give consistent production the first two games against the Milwaukee Bucks, while, you know, Milwaukee seems to have players, role players stepping up left, right, and center. Last night, we saw uh, Ursan Eliasova go for 17, George Hill 13, Brogdon 14. I think Brogdon's a little bit better than your average role player, but, you know, Miritich with 15. Everyone on the Bucks that isn't a star player is stepping up, so I certainly expect the Raptors role players to be better at home, like they have been the whole postseason, but, you know, that's, that's just speculation, and the Raptors need to win this game three in order to keep this a series well if they, Riker, lose, if they lose either at home then the series yep. is certainly over it's very seldom that a team comes back from three to one it yep. have to be a very special run but we'll get to that if we have to get to that one of the big things and you know what it's actually a challenge too it's worth mentioning only five teams in nba history have ever come back from a two to nothing deficit in the conference finals so those okay. teams include the bulls uh, the Michael Jordan Bulls, uh, a KD Thunder, and a LeBron James Cavaliers. I think it was think last that, season against the Celtics. I think that KD Thunder team was against uh, the Spurs with was Kawhi Spurs. and Danny Green, yeah. Yep. So it's we are really seeing Kawhi Leonard be, and a lot of people in the media, everybody is really shaking their heads agreeing that he is an all-time, or he's establishing himself as an all-time great, or mm. at least a top number one guy in the entire NBA. So it's not unreasonable yeah. to think if the Raptors happen to come back from this two to one or two to nothing deficit, it makes sense like that a player the caliber of Kawhi Leonard would be at the helm of this comeback. But what I think sorry to go on that little tangent there, like I said, it was worth noting is that mm. we said oh, yeah, for sure. there can't be Raptors killers. Game one it was Brooke Lopez. Game two it felt like yep. it was Ursan Ilyasova, at least in the in the first half. What is it with the Raptors and what can they do to stop random players coming up? Because obviously everybody in the NBA is skilled, but it's not that mm-hmm. often that some random player comes out of the midst to completely dominate a good defensive team. Yeah, it, it's it's wild because this is what we broke down in the series preview Riker. We knew Giannis was going to get his. In game two, he had 30 points and 17 rebounds. And the Raptors, if you watch the game, it looked like they kept him at bay. It didn't look like Giannis went off completely. Now, Kawhi had similar stats for the Raptors. But the superstars are going to get theirs. And the Milwaukee Bucks have a legitimate superstar in Anda Takumbo. We said we need to keep the Milwaukee Bucks three-point snipers. You know, Meritich, Ilyasoba, Lopez. Middleton's more than the three-point sniper, but keep him at bay. And they've done a good job of keeping Milton at bay but we need to keep these role players from getting and it's let Giannis drive and 
you know, stay at home on these three-point shooters. Be in the gap position. If you're one pass away, help on Giannis. But if you're in that help side, right, you can't be, you know, just letting the Giannis go in and kick it out to open shooters. And I think for the, the first quarter of game one, it looked like the Raptors had that defensive strategy. But as the game went along, they're just rotations. They, were, they weren't as good, and they were a bit a step slow. And the thing about, I, I kind of underestimated about the Bucks as well, how long their three-point shooters are. You know, Ilya Silva and Meritage are big guys. So if you want to run them off the three-point line, you have to close out because if you're if you have a smaller player on them, they can just shoot over them. Or if you're late on your closeout, and you you texted me during this uh, during the game as well. It seems like the Raptors and just NBA players in general have no idea how to stutter step. And obviously, they're the best defenders in the world. You know, we're not saying. But but it seems like the Raptors, especially the Raptors in this series, when they close out, they're just letting the, the Bucks run by them. They don't know how to stutter step on a closeout. Yeah, they're scared of two things. They're scared of the shooters. Like, mm-hmm. if you know Giannis is going to score in the paint, I would rather just allow Giannis to score in the paint. Right? Yep. He... If he's going to get 30 points, if he's going to get 35 points. With contesting, obviously. Contested yeah. shots. You're yeah. not going to yeah. let him walk in. But yeah. you don't need three people swarming. And what was happening is the Raptors, they're running out to every three-point shooter. So first, it's exactly like you said. Only play the gaps. Like They don't need to be so far off that you need to sprint back to cut, to contain these shooters. right? Mm-hmm. But even when they're not even really set to, to have their shot, you even had guys like Kawhi Leonard, and that's when I texted you. He ran yeah. out at Miritich and mm-hmm. left his feet. Just stutter, stay low. If he shoots yeah. it, at least he's still shooting with a hand in his face. You don't need to. You don't yeah. need to be up there with the, You know, they're gonna miss if there's always that pressure on them. Yeah. And then the second we, thing. Oh, yeah, we want. Yeah, just to build off your point, we want to contest. We want to get out there and contest those shots. Obviously, if they, you know, in the Bucks case, if it's Eric Bledsoe or a quick guard out there, you know, it's excusable for them to drive past. They're quick, good ball handlers. But we can't have Nikola Meritich and Ersan Ilyasova be able to to break down Kawhi Leonard and Pascal Brooke Siakam Lopez. on a close Brooke Lopez yeah, is is showing dribble moves and facilitating the ball. I don't understand. He went yeah. four for eleven. That's not. That is a lot of three point attempts in game one, and they're treating him mm. as if he was Steph Curry. It it yeah. is. It's blowing my mind. Yeah, he's not a bad shooter. He's a formidable three-point shooter, and he's developed that. And he deserves respect from beyond the arc. Yeah. But not to the extent that they're jumping on every pump fake and letting him drive past. And yeah. it, that's, that's a big issue that I have. And then the second issue is there was only three blocks that the mm-hmm. Bucks had in uh, in this last game. And two of them were Giannis. And they were, you know, he's a long guy. You do have to be sort of, I guess, account for him, right? Um, yeah. But Marc Gasol, Pascal Siakam, the likes of any of our bigs, as soon as they get into the key, yeah, the Bucks have good interior defense. And yeah, they collapse well, and you need to be concerned about their length. But they are scared. You can see that the Raptors' demeanor, they want to pass once they draw the defenders in. Go up strong. Eventually, you'll get the call. If not, you know, you get blocked a few times. But they're putting absolutely no pressure on the Bucks' interior defense and settling for outside shots all game. And we're not trying to bag on the Raptors here, but that was my two biggest frustrations with watching you know, the first half of the Raptors game was that really they, they're they going overzealous uh, trying to get out to the perimeter. And then on the mm-hmm. on the other side, they're scared in, in the interior. Yeah, no, the, the Bucks defense certainly has the Toronto Raptors shook. And I think a big part about it is the Toronto Raptors, despite the fact we're not going small in the sense that we're playing really fast, because we usually have Ibaka or Gasol on the court. And both of them, we have to get into Gasol especially after. Even Ibaka's really struggled. But we'll get into those after. But the Raptors are playing small ball without the advantages of small ball. Small ball works when you have, you know, a mobile center in your front line and a bunch of guys that can shoot threes and run the floor. But the Toronto Raptors are going small. They're running this two-point guard lineup of Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet. And Fred Van Vliet probably, aside from game one against the Magic, his best game of the postseason, which he only had five points and two assists. It was still a, an abysmal game. He, he's getting a lot of fouls in these games as well because he can't guard. He's too small to go up against, you know, uh, Middleton or wh- whoever he ends up switching onto because the Raptors run a very switch heavy defense, right? We run this this lineup with another shooting guard, Norman Powell, out there. Or, or Danny Green, and it really doesn't make sense. The length of the Bucks is really killing us, and they aren't even as big as the Philadelphia 76ers or the Orlando Magic. We we can match up size-wise with this team, but Nick Nurse is very, you know, we, we aren't someone that's going to trash on Nick Nurse, but and he's, he's done a decent job at making adjustments in this postseason, but I think in this Bucks series, he, he doesn't really know how to match up against Giannis. He has, he doesn't, he's not actually using Kawhi Leonard to guard Giannis at all in the series. And when he is, Giannis isn't driving. And Riker, what, what are your thoughts on just Nick Nurse's lineups and kind of strategy with who he's throwing out there and running Fred? Fred Van Vliet played 24 minutes last game and Jody Meeks played eight. Yeah, it's really, it's confusing because Fred Van Vliet is unplayable. 
Yep. And it's not because the height is that crazy. It, length, it's, it's it's because of the length, and it's exactly what you said. But more it, than that, mm-hmm. there are small players in the league that regardless of the size of their matchup, you can play them. But it's because of how bad he's been. So I don't know yep. what Nick Nurse is waiting for. He's been given ample time. Fred Van Vliet, they went to seven games in the 76ers. He's had enough stretch throughout this playoffs to prove yep. himself, which he hasn't. Put in a, a longer guy. You said it. The 76ers are bigger than the Bucks, right? They're not yeah. necessarily longer, maybe not necessarily taller, but they were certainly bigger. Their their guys mm-hmm. could push around the little guys. But if you're really what we're playing against is tall and lengthy guys, a guy like Patrick mm-hmm. McCaw, they're not going to push him around because they're not completely overpowering him. Apparently, so Patrick would... McCaw has been out with uh, personal reasons. Out personal. Okay. Well. I didn't know that, but yep. the point is, Fred Van Vliet, he, he has no redeemable qualities if he's not playing well. He, he doesn't need to play. And on the flip side, Norman Powell is playing fantastic. So you might bring up the point later that maybe Norman Powell can be inserted to the starting lineup, especially with the woes that Danny Green has had. Mm-hmm. But I think that Nick Nurse, you're right. Uh, mainly the point that I want to focus on is he's not using Kawhi Leonard because really this comes down to a team defensive series yep. right because yep. if Giannis can't be shut down really then having Kawhi Leonard play off of any other guy you're wasting his defensive potential because now yep. you're just asking him to be a good team defense Kawhi got he was biting on Malcolm Brogdon pump fakes and mm-hmm. and he was getting weird fouls picked up so I'd say put Kawhi on the best guy and if you're not then you need to come up with a much better team defensive system because the the bad player or not the bad players but the role player shouldn't be scoring as easily as they are against the Toronto Raptors yeah, no, and the, another thing as well, Pascal Siakam is a phenomenal defender, but he can't guard Giannis. He, he can't really, we saw it last game, he had six personal fouls, Riker, in 26 minutes. He, 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 you know, Giannis is just bullying his way through him. We need to throw bigger players on Giannis, because he's quick, he's mobile, and no one on our roster can really lock down Giannis, and it might be tiring to have Kawhi Leonard on the whole game, but you, you can't have Siakam on him for, for all of his minutes he's on the court. Right, I, I don't think that's smart because it's taken away from Siakam's game as well. Yeah, right? Siakam, we don't have that... his his pre his season averages were better when he played against the Bucks than any yep. other NBA team, and he's almost virtually disappeared against in this series now. Yeah, well, because he's he's getting in foul trouble, his confidence is not there because he's going up against Giannis on the other end, and you know Pascal Siakam, we're gonna need that second star, and Kyle Lowry. You know, for he's not the the second scoring option on this team. I think he's still probably, you know, arguably the second best player, but he's not the second scoring option. That's what Pascal Siakam has established himself as, and he hasn't been reliable the past 10 games, ever since he's sustained that calf injury. So we really need Pascal Siakam to step up if we want to beat the Bucks. Larry's been doing other things. He's had actually a pretty good series, in my opinion. Game one was absolutely phenomenal. Last night, 15 points, four assists, four rebounds. You know, his shooting wasn't really there, but he's doing the other things on the court. I think Larry has you know, he, he doesn't deserve a lot of blame in the series, but, you know, Pascal Siakam has to step up, but I think it'd be, you know, unfair for us not to bring up the center position for the Toronto Raptors, and Marc yeah. in 19 minutes last night, two points, Riker, one for nine from the field, you know, even his defense, you know, the one, the thing about Marc Gasol and the reason the trade, everyone was hyping up the trade, especially after the second round, even the games where he didn't have the biggest scoring nights, he was locking down on defense, whether it be help side, whether it be guarding an all-star center in Joel and Beater Vucevic, defensively, he was always there and he was always in the rhythm of the offense. And he did take, at least he took shots confidently in those series, you know, and not a lot, not as much as we were hoping, but he at least was confident on enough shots to where he wasn't a liability on offense. Riker in this series, he's completely disappeared. You know, the JV Hive is back, you know, trashing on this Gasol trade, even though I think we both agree it was a smart move. But th- this series has not been been a good one for Marc Gasol. Well, the state of plain and simply, the Raptors would not have advanced past the 76ers yeah. with JV in the roster. I love that guy, but he wouldn't have been mm-hmm. able to do the defensive work that Marc Gasol did. Yeah, but he I would agree. have got killed in the pick and roll. Yeah, Marc Gasol is... He is a more traditional center, and I think Mm -hmm. he is more comfortable guarding big men that will do things like, you know, their game is down in the post, or their game is slower. Now, Brooke Brooke Lopez, credit due to him, he is... Mm -hmm putting the pressure on Marc Gasol to play out him, out on him at the perimeter, and Marc Gasol is not adjusting the way that we would expect an elite defender to in staying on his feet, staying low. You don't need to block three-point shots. That's ridiculous. You know, just yeah. have a hand in the face, and they're not going to make shots at a high rate. And if they do, then you live with that, right? 
Yep. Um, but he's getting beat on simple matchups. He's getting blown by by Brook Lopez consistently, and that's the reason that he's not playing or he wasn't in the last game. And then even more than that, it's exactly like you said. The confidence is disgustingly low because he's yep. passing out interior shots and, and the fear of being blocked by Brook Lopez, of all things. They, they probably match up equally in size or the, you know... Be strong, you know. You, you you'll probably guard, you'll probably draw a foul. I'm really disappointed with how Marcus Gasol has played, and then I would put Pascal Siakam into that bundle as well. I, you would said yeah. you said it yourself, Kawhi Leonard and Kyle Lowry. They can't be blamed for this series. But if we're mm-hmm. going to attribute blame to somebody, then my number one pick for that would be Pascal Siakam and Marcus Gasol. But we we said that this video should be titled The Glimmer of Hope. So let's not talk about what needs to happen, right? Because obviously Mm -hmm. it could happen or it could not happen. We know that Nick Nurse needs to make more strategic decisions. But what are the reasons that the Raptors can come back? Not, you know, not if Marcus Gasol starts playing better, but what's the reason that they will start playing better? Uh, You cut out their record. What did you say? What is the reason that they will start playing better, Ben? Well, the Toronto Raptors. If they can come home, and we said it at the top of the podcast, if the role players can step up, Danny Green, he only played 22 minutes last night. He needs to come out, be more aggressive, knock down threes, and he hit two threes last night. But guys like that, give Norman Powell some more run. Give give some confidence in Serge Ibaka, these these types of players who usually play a lot better at home. Pascal Siakam, he usually plays a lot better on his home court. If we can just put players in a position to score, I think they'll take advantage on their home court. And Riker... You know, we we kind of we haven't really talked about this on the podcast, but the Milwaukee Bucks aren't the Cleveland Cavaliers. They aren't an established playoff tested team. They aren't a team that you know when the they they aren't experienced. Giannis is a phenomenal superstar, generational talent, but he's not LeBron James. Even if he becomes that at some point, right? They they're not a team that's gonna necessarily just you know completely step on your throat if you if you're down. I think the Raptors can come back and. You know, if they win game three, they're only down 2-1. We played against the Milwaukee Bucks just two years ago. I know they're a completely different roster, down 2-1. And everyone counted us out, and we won that series in six. If the Toronto Raptors can just gain some momentum, win these two home games with the role players playing solid, I think we could steal that one in Milwaukee. And then we have game six on our home court, and we could really seal out this series, Riker. I'm still, you know, despite the fact a lot of Raptors fans are out here saying, you know, it's over, we should, you know, Kawhi's leaving, fire Nick Nurse, all that all that sort of stuff. I'm still confident in this roster that we can turn it around. We have too much talent on this team to be playing this poorly. And, you know, the Raptors, when they faced adversity all season long, even throughout their whole tenure as a, as a Toronto Raptors franchise, Riker, whenever they face adversity, they usually bounce back. Whether it be a, a sweep in the playoffs, the next season they'll come back and almost win 60 games. They get knocked out again by LeBron. We we make a trade. We get Kawhi Leonard. If we you know go down two one to the Philadelphia 76ers, we come back and Kawhi hits a game seven game winner. Riker, this reminds me of the series in 2016 in the conference finals against the Cleveland Cavaliers. We're down 0-2, and then we had that hero the heroics of Bismack Biombo to win our two home games. Obviously, that roster of DeMar DeRozan, Kyle Lowry, and Biz, that big three that we had didn't even compare in terms of talent to the Cleveland Cavaliers of LeBron, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, J.R. Smith, Tristan Thompson, all those those names. But the Raptors came out and they fought. And this roster talent-wise, is miles and miles ahead of that one, right? But we need that grit. We need that passion. And if this wants to be, if this team wants to be the greatest Raptors team of all time, they need to win these two home games, come out with some passion, come out with some fire. And, you know, the role players have to step up. You know, the, the Milwaukee Bucks, if, if you look at it on paper, Riker, they're relying on players on the minimum. Ursan Eliasova and guys that bounce around the league. George Hill, a guy who missed layups in the finals last year. Meritich, he's been on the Bulls, traded left, right, and center. We have championship-tested players. Danny Green, a champion role player. Marcus Gasol has been to Western Conference Finals as the star on the team. You know, Serge Ibaka has been to an NBA Finals. He let, well, was on all those OKC teams. You know, we have guys that are paid highly with experience and, you know, have, have been here, have been in these moments. And I think if the Raptors can gain some momentum at home, get that passion like we had in that 2016 run, we now have the talent to where we can capitalize on that momentum and beat this Milwaukee Bucks team. They are not LeBron James. They are not the Cleveland Cavaliers, Riker. I think I think the Raptors can still win this series. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. And for me, 
you know, there's some variables in what you're saying. There is guys that should step up, that they need to step up. Yeah. But in terms of things that are definite, right? Mm -hmm. It's definite that the Toronto Raptors fans are among the best in the league. The Raptors mm -hmm. will positively use the home court advantage, or well, the advantage now being on the home court. Uh, mm -hmm. Game one, they would have won. I yeah. guarantee you, if they were at home, because a lot of those yeah. momentum shots, those big shots, was inspired by the fans. So now we're giving that sort of X factor to the Toronto Raptors. That's going to go in their favor. And then the second thing is about, you know, maybe Giannis is the next LeBron, and he's certainly playing like it. But the reason that he was a big... Re he was the, the main reason that the Toronto Raptors kept losing to him is because we didn't have a LeBron on our own team. But for every yep. point that Giannis has scored, so has Kawhi Leonard. So it's exactly like you said. It comes down to the bench, guys. It comes down to the rest of the team. And I don't expect that Milwaukee's bench and their extra, extra players are going to have as much of an impact now when the Toronto Raptors are playing at home. I think they're going to see the box uh, or the, the playback tapes. They're going to know how to adjust. But it's a fun series, nonetheless. If they come out yeah. and lose the next one, we're, it's <laughs> probably in the books. But, Perhaps in seven. Yeah, but this is it's still fun, and uh, I yeah. think the Raptors have a, the ability to do damage. And in terms of the stand sponsorship, the giveaway... We'll announce, I guess, the new one. Maybe we'll announce it after tomorrow night's game. If not, yep. we'll just announce it on Monday or Tuesday whenever we also introduce what the next week's challenger contest is for the for the next round of giveaways. So stay tuned for that. Um, ben, do you have anything else to close out the podcast? No, you guys are the best for making this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Riker, wraps in six. Wraps in seven. <laughs> Ooh. All right, cheers. <laughs>